Jeff and Adam here, we're at the Green in the Desert project. It's the Permaculture in Action internship for a month and there's all kinds of things going on. Let me, let me show you what's happening with a team of ladies and some really radical spiky mulch. Now up here at the top of the site, we've had a great success with spiky mulch pits. And we've got one last chance to do another one. And I've got one working team here. There's four teams around the site. They're doing one week each. And we've got a ladies team. And this lady from Singapore needs a hand with a wheelbarrow. Yes. How are we going, Priscilla? <laughs> good. Yeah. You've got it. So we've got a good, strong team of ladies here. And they're all chopping spiky mulch. The last of our spiky trees. Unfortunately, I've missed the bottom of the hole, but I do have some photographs. And uh, we've dug a hole. How deep is it, ladies, you reckon? One and a half to two meters, yeah, something yeah. like that. It's a big one. And we're chopping in Jerusalem thorn there. We put in the last of the regrowth prosopus, which have been cut off all the way around the site. We've got some dry Jerusalem thorn here. A few branches and logs, which actually fetch good money as firewood. Then we're bringing in a bit of old manure oh, and we're layering it with manure and our horrible, hard to deal with spiky mulch. Because the site's got fertile enough now to switch on to things like leukina. Here's a leukina pollard here. That's better mulch to go down to the trees, much easier to handle. But because of our success slightly lower, this is the very top terrace. This is the very top of the site where our big water tank is, above our shower toilet block. And we're going for a super spiky pit here. We're layering it with old manure as well. We have some freshly made biochar to add to the spiky pit though. Ah, look at this. We've got the, a little bit of biochar as well. That'll lock up the organisms. Look at that lovely habitat going in. Large service area and a lot of dust. We're in a very dusty region. Now if I, if I slip downhill here to this region, okay, now, just to position, they're on the, just above the highest rock wall earth pack swale, and it's the most infertile, driest area of the site. Went well, down here, it used to be like that. Now we have citrus fruiting. We have a lot more fertility. We even have green herbaceous weeds at the end of summer. And this big pile here is the summit of one of those pits, absolutely full of spiky mulch, spiky legume tree branches and twigs and some small logs. And there's another one just over there. And it's got manure caked on the top and there's another one over there. So I, I'm in between three here. They've been filled for about two years. I aim some little diversion drains into each one so when it does rain, extra water goes in. We put a little bit of water on top every now and again. But this whole region, this whole area around here has completely transformed. It's a lot more fertile. It's lost that sort of harshness. So now we've decided with the last of our spiky mulch, we're gonna go right up the top and do the highest one on the site here in a very shaded part of the site. I'm under one of the last spiky legumes. It's probably gonna stay up for a while longer as shade. And here's our nursery. Now, it's just above the vegetable garden there, which is also shaded. We're potting up all kinds of things in here. We're seed collecting. Who said you're Babaya. Ah. Babaya. Okay, this is Naima with the Rock Terrace Garden, helping us out in the nursery here. And Louis from France, and we have Chris from America here on the team too. I've been planting some, uh, some spinach and some lettuce and the wicking beds on the roof. On the roof? Yeah, All so right. I just emptied this out. And you've got a bit of uh, portulaca succulent there, ice plant they call it in America. It's got a few little seedlings coming up here. We're getting ready to get things out. There's a tray of seeds here. What were these? Cabbage, marigold, and bell pepper. Ah, right. They've just gone in, and we've got some red-stemmed salon spinach, which has been a real success here, surprisingly. We're going to collect some sharp sand and plant it just in sharp sand as it's a cutting, so it grows hair roots first. And it's a typical nursery, little bits of seed collection going on everywhere seed storage, different things going in. 
We've got a uh, little bit of garlic coming up here. It's just a real permaculture nursery that's quite diverse. Lots and lots of stuff. So, and we have a team in here. So this is our nursery going over to our kitchen garden. So Omar's from England, Istefan's from Hungary, living in Ireland. Uh, Istefan's one of our assistant teachers here. He's been really active in Africa and many other projects. He's volunteered to come and help Adam and I try and uh, direct these interns. And our veggie garden's taking off as the temperature starts to drop. So we're putting worm juice on, we're putting compost on, we're putting mulch on, we're planting extra seedlings, and we're getting ready for it to power into a good growing season during the cooler months of winter. And you'll really see it move in the next few weeks as I report in. Up this track, which is one of the nicer little contour tracks on the farm, we're doing some extra work with compost. And we've got some hard pipe here because we need to put in the overhead irrigation for the chicken composting system. Uh, the chickens are getting a real treat now because they're getting good quality compost. We have a new evolution, Jeff. A new we evolution. We did the maggot bucket, but we've actually lowered the maggot bucket. So now the chickens are actually eating the flies <laughs> while they're interacting with the maggot bucket. So we've just doubled the production. You don't think they're going to reduce the fly population? <laughs> they may do. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a big job if they try to achieve that. I don't think we'd be short of maggots. So what you got? We're building a Berkeley Method compost and we're letting the chickens interact with it. And we'll just keep it, we'll keep it like this for a week and then on the week it's going to flip down. Right. And by the 35 days, this will be a finished pile and we'll exit the tractor and then it'll be brought around to the rest of the garden. And let me get through this dusty compost action. Dust is a big thing here. If you want to just look at the thermostat, we're hitting a lovely 65. 65 on 65 the second degrees. Down. 65, so we're on almost perfect um, on temperature, although it's quite a small pile, um, but we're still adding in. And the chickens have actually knocked it off, so a lot of the material is actually here, which we'll pile back up today. Right. So it's all here, we'll just pile that back up. And here we have a very simple maggot bucket hanging from the roof, and we have um, some meat scraps in there, a bit of dead uh, animal material. We have big holes for the flies to get in and blow the meat as maggots. We have uh, maggots dripping out at the bottom for the flies. And the chickens eat the maggots, but as Adam says, they're also coming along and pecking at the flies. So they're getting a few extra flies. No shortage of flies in these dry climates. <laughs> so then we're converting some rotting animal material into eggs, which is a great conversion and it's fine. So our third pile down looks like this. And our fourth pile down looks like this. And our team there is uh, quite international. Walid, where are you from? Qatar. Yeah. French Tunisian. You live in Qatar. I'm living in Qatar. But you're from? Uh, Tunisia. Tunisia. Yeah. So Tunisian living in Qatar. Englishman from Cornwall. And uh, Eric, you're from California. Yeah, that's about as international as you want to get. And we've got an Irish Moroccan directing them. <laughs> there we go. How exciting could it be here on the Green in the Desert Diversity project? Diversity is key. <laughs>